Today, we talk about how psychedelics or hallucinogens affect your brain. But for the best context, it would be good for you to check out our other video on how our brain cells communicate. Just in case you missed that video, or if you need a refresher, here's a summary of what we covered. So let's review. We have two brain cells, neuron and glial. Neurons are the main talkers. To do the talking, they use electrical states and ions to send signals from one end to the other. When something happens, like stepping on a tack, the cells are triggered to talk from where they were at rest to promoting an action. Once they become active, the signal then travels down the neuron and smacks into the end of the cell sending neurotransmitters flying out of that end and floating towards another cell to get to the next cell to talk, and so on. Neurotransmitters can have both an excitatory or inhibitory effect on the cell. This effect can determine the electrical charge of the next cell, and thus determine the flow of ions, bringing us to start the process all over again to the next cell. Now that you're all caught up, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about that thing in your head. No, not that unending song that Lamb sang on that show you watched as a kid, but your brain. Commonly known as psychedelics, hallucinogens are a classification of psychoactive drugs resulting in, well, hallucination. In order to understand the way in which hallucinogens may affect the brain, we have to shrink down to the molecular level. In other words, hallucinogens impact the way in which our brain cells communicate with each other. So let's take a trip into cellular neurophysiology and see how hallucinogens disrupt the way in which our brain cells communicate. Psychedelic drugs, those most commonly associated with having hallucinogenic effects, likely impact the transfer of information across neurons during chemical transmission, thus affecting neurotransmitter systems. These these drugs act on receptors that bind with specific neurotransmitters, ligand binding receptors. As one of the best known hallucinogens, let's take a look at lysergic acid diethylamide, commonly known as LSD, and how it may impact the brain by altering neuronal communication. LSD was first synthesized by Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman in 1938. It wasn't until five years later when Hoffman accidentally sure, ingested the drug, that its mind-altering effects were noted. Reported effects of LSD include a dreamlike state with heightened sense of awareness, hallucinations, and a mixing of the senses where, for instance, a taste may result in something like hearing a tune. According to a recent study, while under the effects of LSD, the dissolution of the self as an individual may occur, and it doesn't take a lot of LSD to experience these side effects. A full-blown hallucination may take place after ingesting 25 micrograms of LSD. A traditional dose of aspirin is 25,000 times larger at 650 milligrams. Like other hallucinogens, the chemical structure of LSD is similar to that of the neurotransmitter serotonin. This has led researchers to believe that the drug most likely acts on the serotonergic system. In fact, it is an agonist, meaning it promotes a change or action at the serotonin receptors on the presynaptic terminals of the Ralphae nuclei, resulting in an inhibitory response, thus preventing these neurons from firing. Interestingly, decreased activity, less neurons firing, in the Ralphae nuclei is also associated with dreaming. Another way in which LSD impacts the brain is by replacing the natural release of serotonin throughout cortical areas associated with sensory experiences. This effect may account for the mixing of sensory information, as well as hallucinations, often reported as side effects of LSD. Finally, the experience of the dissolution of the self may be the result of increased communication of cells between traditionally distinct cortical areas, but decreased communication of cells within traditionally related cortical areas. Thus, as it impacts the serotonergic system located throughout various areas in the brain, there appears to be an interplay between excitation and inhibition that helps give rise to the reported side effects experienced by those under LSD. Importantly, not all hallucinogens work on the same neurotransmitter system. Case in point being ketamine. Ketamine is a drug traditionally used for the induction of anesthesia. According to the World Health Organization, it is an essential drug due to the fact that it's relatively safe and the side effects are minimal, especially relative to its medical benefits. More recently, it has been approved by the U.S. Federal Drug Administration for the treatment of traditionally treatment-resistant depression. Nevertheless, the medical benefits produced by ketamine has not prevented it from being considered an illicit substance due to its potent hallucinogenic effects. 
The intense hallucinatory experience generated from ketamine consumption is the result of its pharmacological structure. Ketamine is a relative of a well-known hallucinogen, phencyclidine, or PCP. Like PCP, ketamine acts on the NMDA receptor. This receptor is fascinating because it's both ligand-gated and voltage-gated. Glutamate is the main excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain and bonds with the NMDA receptor. Thus, the NMDA receptor is a type of glutamate-gated receptor. Ketamine, like its chemical relative PCP, is an NMDA inhibitor. This means that when ketamine binds to the NMDA receptor, it acts to inhibit the response of the neuron, possibly preventing the occurrence of action potentials, as opposed to depolarization of the cell. According to researchers, ketamine binds onto the NMDA receptor, assuring that the gate remains blocked by magnesium. This magnesium blocking is a property of the voltage-gated phenomenon on this receptor. This receptor is really fascinating, by the way. This blocking is also associated with inducing hallucinations or distorting of the senses. But it also has a surprising outcome. It appears to quickly alleviate symptoms of severe depression. When used properly, ketamine is able to stabilize people suffering from depression and suicidal patients in hours, as opposed to weeks or months, as is the case with standard antidepressants. In addition to blocking the NMDA receptor site, ketamine may promote dendritic growth. In depressed patients, the dendrites used for communicating with other neurons are shorter and fewer compared with healthy controls. This may be due to the toxic effect the stress hormone cortisol may have on the brain. However, when ketamine is introduced to the system, the dendrites experience growth, thereby potentially aiding in the communication and connectivity among brain cells and neural networks. For this reason, the FDA has just approved a nasal spray, esketamine, for traditionally treatment-resistant depression. Esketamine is not expected to result in all of the experiences often associated with ketamine, as it's a derivative of the main drug. However, it does still have a chance to produce sedation and out-of-body experiences. Unfortunately, it's very costly and not an option for many in the U.S. due to the high cost of medical care. Thus, generic ketamine may continue to be used off-label for those suffering from severe depression. Our nervous system is complex, but drug use has been a great way for researchers to better understand how our brain cells work. In some instances, it's been the only way researchers have discovered neurotransmitter systems. Importantly, much still needs to be discovered, and certain drugs may have additional yet unknown effects on other neurotransmitters and their corresponding receptors. When it comes to neuroscience, the future holds many possibilities, so people like me don't get the luxury of getting tripped off. If you find yourself edutained, make sure to subscribe to this channel and share with family and friends. Make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're interested in supporting the show with big Brainiac energy, then head on over to my Patreon page where you'll find perks for my members. As always, thank you for watching.